In one of my past reviews, I gave the impression that The Darkness was a good game. Honestly, I had only played the first half or so, and that was almost a year ago. It wasn't until I finally sat down and finished it that I remember just how much this game pissed me off. I don't even know where to start, so I'll just give a little background. The Darkness is a first-person shooter developed by Starbury Studio, based off the comic book series from Top Cow of the same name. You play as a young mafia hitman named Tommy Wusso, I mean Jackie, who can wield a powerful entity known as the Darkness. After a falling out with his uncle Polly and the death of his childhood friend and love interest Jenny, you guide Jack Wyatt on his quest for vengeance. First off, the gameplay mechanics suck. Maybe it's because I was playing the Xbox 360 version? I don't know. What I do know is that switching to the darkness after nearly 20 hours of Duke Nukem 3D and Shadow Warrior on the PC is jarring. I could just never get comfortable with the controls. Brandon Lee moves so slow and jumping is useless. They should have replaced it with sprinting. The darkness isn't really your typical first person shooter. Running and gunning, which is fun, is replaced by the darkness's superpowers that you're supposed to use to outfox the enemies. One of the first ones you get is the creeping dark. Basically one of the snake heads that hang from your shoulders can be used to sneak up on enemies for a quick kill or to unlock doors. The snake thing controls like crap, constantly getting stuck on anything more than 3 inches high. You also have a tentacle that can supposedly impale enemies, but I only really used it to take out lights that drain your power, hence the name, the darkness. You also get a pair of darkness guns, which are pretty cool. One is basically a pistol, and the other one is a one-handed shotgun. The only thing is you can't use other darkness powers when you're wielding them. The next one is the Darkness Void, a black hole that kills anyone within 10 feet of the thing. Needless to say, I use that a lot. The only problem was that as soon as the void disappeared, so would my darkness powers, leaving me vulnerable. I don't know if it was a glitch or if the darkness needed to recharge or what, but it was super annoying. The last power is the ability to summon four types of darklings. Light killer shocks enemies and knocks out lights, though it was much faster just to do it myself with a tentacle. The berserker rushes and melees his opponents. The kami hating gunner has a gatling gun that he mostly shoots into walls. And lastly, my least favorite, the kamikaze, who always seemed to blow up 20 feet from any enemy or directly in my face. Saying the darklings AI is anything but fucked is a complete lie. The only real good thing that they did was distract enemies while I tried to get close enough to open up a darkness void. One of the biggest annoyances was how the game transitioned you to the next objective. Instead of having a cutscene, you actually had to walk there, which normally isn't a big deal for me. I like Elder Scrolls, and if you've played any of those, you know there's a whole lot of walking. But after you find a location, all you need to do is pull up the map and hit fast travel not the darkness. Basically, you get a page or learn some info at the end of a mission. Typically, the next mission will take place on the other side of the city, so you walk the streets back to the subway entrance. After a loading screen cutscene, you'll be in the subway. You check the map to make sure you're going the right way, get on the train, watch another loading screen cutscene, get off the train, walk to the exit, watch another loading screen cutscene, walk to the next objective, and there, you just spent 15 minutes on bullshit. And most of the time, there's no enemies. You're just walking through the same streets over and over again. I get so bored I knock out all the lights just to keep my brain from melting. They attempted to make the game feel open world but just completely failed. Loading times suck in this game, which wouldn't be so bad if you didn't have to deal with the subway crap. I almost like how you get little cutscenes while the game loads. A lot of times it would give the player a chance to hear that guy from the Sopranos with the nose monologue about what's actually happening, just like in a real comic. Other times he would just stand there looking at his guns in silence like he didn't know I was watching, and I have no idea how many times I had to hear Goth Gump talk about his crazy taxi driver. It's nice that the developers gave us something to watch other than just a load bar, but didn't that cutscene need to be loaded first? Which means I'm waiting even longer? The fuck? And if the video clip isn't done before loading, a skip button will appear. You motherfuckers. Yes, I want to skip this 20 second long video I've already watched 10 fucking times. I found myself stuck not knowing how to progress quite a few times in the darkness. My last and most frustrating time was when you actually fight the darkness in hell or wherever the hell Spoonie goes when he dies. He gives up all of his powers leaving you with only two pistols and a World War I bolt action rifle. The darkness takes form and sends darklings at you. Having played countless video games over the years, I figured I needed to shoot him. As I shot the thing, images of Jenny would pop up as red covered the screen. After dying five fucking times, I finally summoned a rage quit. After calming down, I found a let's play where I learned to not shoot the darkness. You motherfucker. And what makes the whole situation worse is that Jackie gives up the darkness just to regain it after this 
fight? Yeah, I know it had to be left in sunlight until bending to Jackie's will, but shit. As I said, I played this on my 360. I had always hoped for a PC port, but I picked it up along with its sequel for about 10 bucks. But this game played like ass. Frame rate was inconsistent and animations were chunky. I do have a refurbished launch 360, and maybe the console's just breaking, or maybe the disc was bad. I'm not sure. I am sure that if I had played The Darkness on a PC and I actually gave scores to the games I review, this game would receive a 7 out of 10 instead of a 6. I remember when The Darkness came out in 2007, it was one of the first games to not be a sequel for the new generation of consoles. The graphics were pretty good for the time and it promised to be an original experience. And it is. I think that's why I got so much hype and such positive reviews. But being original doesn't mean good. It could have been good. Hell, the developers knew it could have been great. That's why they threw in these scripted events that could only be watched as the darkness ass rapes every enemy on screen. It's like Starbreeze was telling us, Um, so this is the game we wanted to make, but um, uh, yeah, fuck you. In closing, I did not like the darkness. I'm so glad I only paid $2.50 for it. But I still do have the darkness 2 staring at me, wanting to be played. Sure. I'll play it. It would be pretty ironic if I liked the sequel that got worse reviews than the first. Maybe I'll just sell it and get the PC version instead. <laughs>